So this is our third video working on our cartoon jumble. So we're 30 minutes in. I've got a lot of excess stuff, but it's all mostly on this last layer. And some of it I kind of like. If I use Command Plus, I can zoom in and kind of see there's a lot of cool intricate stuff. But maybe some of it I don't like so much, and that's from this barbarian layer, which I can tell by turning on and off. And so I am going to use my lasso and delete all that kind of grayish distraction from the barbarian layer. That's better. See, maybe I'll clean up a little bit from another layer. Maybe this one. That's better. Then one last final touch. I don't like how this line is cutting through this foot. So I have to find what layer that line is on. And I'm going to show you now, this becomes a common problem when we're working with lots of layers. How can I tell what layer that line is on? Well, right now I only have five layers. I could turn them all on and off until that line disappears, and that shows me it's on the background layer. But as we get more than five layers, the professional way to do it is to go to your Move tool, which is at the very top. And we are going to modify our Move tool. And you'll see that at the top bar. And we have this Auto Select option for it. So Auto Select on the Move tool means anything you click with the Move tool will get selected. So if we Auto Select for Layer, when I click on this, it will go to the layer where that is. If I click on this, it will go to the layer where that, <laughs> where that is. OK, this is where it gets complicated. Because they're multiplied and not normal layers, when I click, it's always going to go to the top layer. Because even though we're not seeing the white pixels, the white pixels are still there. But let's see if it will work for overlapping. If I turn this back to multiply so I can see through it, if I click on this layer, it will show me if I turn off this top layer, turn off all the other layers. <laughs> If I click on it, it will move my selection from this layer to the one it's on. Now, why isn't it highlighting the background like it is the other layers? Does anyone know? And it has to do with this little icon here. So that one works fine, highlights it, right? But when I try to go onto the background for it, it's not just that. It deselects the other layer, but it won't highlight the background. That's because the background has what's called a soft lock on it. And background layers always have a soft lock. How do we get rid of that so that we can treat the background layer like any other layer? We can erase pixels from it. It's very simple. You just have to rename it. So if you double click on your background layer, allow it to be named layer zero, say OK. All of a sudden, it's auto-selectable again. See the difference? And all of a sudden, this is going to be helpful for us as we color these, I can delete from it and get to a checkerboard, which you couldn't if it was the background layer. And did you first have a checkerboard background? When we for the same reasons we did with the folder icon, when we submit them, we want them to be free-floating. Free-floating black and white. Um, and to do that, we need to have the checkerboard showing. All right. So now the question is, I'm done with my black and white. I'm ready to submit it. Oh, I wanted to fix that. So now <laughs> I know it's on the background layer. How can I fix it? Well, I can just use my lasso. And I can delete it. Very good. I'm going to kind of zoom in with Command Plus, look around, see if there's anything that looks too weird. This looks a little weird. Got to see what layer that's on. It's on this layer, so I'm going to get rid of that. But again, I'm not going for perfection yet. Whoops. Lasso tool. I want to get rid of that debris. That's on my barbarian layer as well. Get rid of that. But what I do need to do now to perfect this is I need to get rid of all 
the white and have this be just black line work. So this is how we're going to do that without losing any options, without a lot of extra work. And we've seen this before. So now this is what I showed you this morning in action. Go to your, turn on all your layers. Make sure multiply is on so you see everything on a white background. Then hold down option, click on the top layer, go to layer, merge visible. And what does that do? Gives us a new layer that is no longer on multiply mode, it's normal mode, right? And it has white and black pixels, but everything's combined. That allows me to now select all the white pixels everywhere without having to do it in multiple layers. I do that with a new selection tool. Because sometimes, <laughs> you can't, I, don't, I do not like these little helpful animations in this new version. Uh, sometimes, there's probably a preference to turn it off. I'll look into that. But sometimes you can't physically lasso everything you want to select. Sometimes you need the computer to make smart selections for you. And the tool I like best for that is right under the lasso, and it's called the magic wand tool. Now it's the second tool in the drawer. So if it's right under the lasso, you're in the right place, but you have to hold down on it until you open the drawer and move down to the second item in the drawer. We will never use the quick selection tool in this class, simply because it's a tool of expedience. It's not a tool for accuracy. And we want to really be able to control what we do. Does that make sense? All right. So we use the magic wand tool, and we're going to use these settings at the top. The most important setting is tolerance. So tolerance means how close do the pixels need to be for me to select them. And the default is 32, and it's a wonderful default. So if you have no better option, use 32. We'll learn more about it. The next is, do I need my selection to be contiguous? So what the magic wand allows you to do is you click on one pixel, and it will find all the other pixels that match it within a tolerance of 32. Right? If I have contiguous checked, that means it will only click on the white pixels that are touching each other. So I just did that, and I hit delete. But that's a problem, right? Because there's still a lot of white pixels in the image, and that's not what I want. And the problem with contiguous is maybe I did want white in it, but then it also deleted all this stuff because these pixels were contiguous with the background. So I'm going to hit Command-Z. And instead of contiguous being checked, I'm going to uncheck it. So that means. I click on a white pixel anywhere in the image, and it will select the white pixels everywhere in the image. Does that make sense? Um, I see all the borders. Well, I'm going to, once I've selected all the white pixels, I'm going to hit delete. And then I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. And I have just black pixels and some gray pixels from line art free floating and I might make a little last minute change because I just noticed this little object which is a little um, out of place because it's so hard edged but now it's all in one layer so I can just delete all from that same layer and if I'm a perfectionist I would go around and check everything but I don't need it to be a perfectionist right now now by doing it as a duplicate on top I still have all the information underneath, right? But this makes it a lot faster. Now I'm going to save this, just like we did with our self-portrait icons. I'm going to save as Carl Exercise 1 Cartoon Jumble BW Black White to the desktop as a PNG. Save. That's going to shrink it down to just one, one layer, but it's a transparent layer. Then I'm going to double click on that so it opens up in preview. So I can see that gray background behind, so I know that it, it really is transparent. Now that is what I'm going to upload to PhotoBucket. 
I'm going to log you all into PhotoBucket. Don't worry about it. But I'm going to show you on this video how you do that. But don't do it unless you're already logged into PhotoBucket. <laughs> so we go to PhotoBucket. Login information is accurate, and it's in your links. Yeah, and I guess it has a timeout now. Oh, no, it says log out. Weird. So it thinks I'm logged in. I just changed their interface. The only problem with external parties, third party software, is they can make changes without letting you know. So this is going to log in correctly, and it's going to remember me. We're going to get all your computers to that so that we can bypass you know, all those problems. Remember, don't go to PhotoBucket. I will log you in. Once we're in there, we're going to go to Library. Come on. And we'll upload it. Once we have our PNG saved on our desktop, we're good. Now we can start adding color. And because we have a PNG file, it's very easy to add color. We're going to double click on the layer, and we're going to play with what's called color overlay. Check color overlay, go to the color box selector, pick a color. Turn the opacity up, go to normal, hit OK. Why does it not look red? Well, because unlike maybe your file, mine is in a gray format. So I have to go to image mode and change it to RGB color format. Don't merge. Keep all my layers. Then when I do color overlay and I change it to red, it will be red. I can play with the opacity so I can bl blend that red in with the black underneath. And if I don't want to do it as a full flat color, I can do the option underneath, the gradient overlay, and pick a gradient. And I can modify it, pick from options. Let's do a rainbow here. Let's do it at normal mode. All right, let's play with the opacity. I can change the angle. I can change the colors in the gradient by selecting new ones. And just play around. You can also play around with your blending mode. So I only want the lighter colors to show up. Or I want it to dissolve as it gradates. You know, all interesting options. You can combine the two so I have the red at a low opacity with the gradient and the dissolving on top. So we just have a, a lot of options. You can do a radial gradient instead of a linear gradient, which goes out from the middle. You can play with the scale of the gradient. Let's see what would be a nice color in here. It's got like that blue. custom gradient with as many colors as you want. Yeah, so maybe something kind of like that. Now, what's beautiful about using layer styles, which you just double click on the layer to get to with, the, with the, the left button, is that you can turn them on and off. Right? So once it processes, I can use the eyeball and just give back to my black one as well. And if I save that into my Photoshop file, I'm, I'm golden. I have all those options in this.